What's up, guys? You told us, uh, I think back in the, the spring, that you were going to kind of change things up to like, suit your body more towards playing quarterback. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for you, did that mean like leaning out a little bit? How did you kind of change that? Yeah, time? yeah, I, I leaned out, um, came in a little bit lighter than how I would normally come into camp, and then my weight room routine through the offseason was uh, quite a bit different as well. Not not so much from a lower body standpoint, but everything upper body, um, backside shoulder, big emphasis and, and so forth. So is that the purpose for that is that I guess uh, more flexibility? I, think, I don't know actually. <laughs> yeah, um, well I think I, I think as a thrower it's more important to have a stronger backside you know, uh, than it is your front side shoulder and it's naturally to work your front side muscles than it is your backside. Um, and I can tell you for me historically when I get sore it's all your decel motions from from taking so many reps and throwing so many balls and so throughout my career here I was always trying to find that balance of being strong enough to do what I was going to be asked to do but you know still be able to to throw a ball and, and so forth and so there's a definitely a transition there. You mentioned uh, the soft season too. You were working on your, your footwork. Do you yep. Feel like that, you feel that paying off? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I think. Uh, um, yeah, I think just having another year in the off season just to play quarterback, my my comfort level in the offense, you know, throwing things in rhythm, um, has felt really good. You know, this was this was day three, so by no means do I feel like I'm I'm ready to roll right now. But um, we had three really solid. Uh, days of work, and um, I think the off season has been good for me. So that just helps with getting the ball out quicker. But yeah, I, I think the idea, and as as you play quarterback, I think um, your feet really, uh, from a timing standpoint, are telling your eyes where they need to go, and uh, your eyes follow your feet. And so the more uh, you can train that, the more instinctive it becomes, and um, I think overall the better uh, player you you are. Jason, are you truly uh, at the point right now where the offense is second nature? Like, you know, like the back of your hand? Because I know you always were leaning on Drew. And, yeah. You know, and... I, I, think, um, I think that there are levels to that. So as you talk about understanding the offense the way that, that Drew did, or Coach does, uh, I, I certainly I don't feel like I'm, I'm there. Um, but every year you become more comfortable in, in what you're doing and I would say every year I have a different emphasis of, of what we're trying to do and I think you come into camp and you're trying to find this balance of not really scheming or game planning against your defense um, but I think my comfort level inside the offense is higher now that you can spend more time um, about what the defense is doing versus what offensively what your expectations are. What's up? Yeah, I mean, I think every year it is the same for me. So, you know, this year there's a competition between Jameis and I and who's going to play, but um, the expectation for myself never changes, you know. So my routine, the things that I'm consistently working on, that, that sort of stuff doesn't change um, from, from year to year. And so the way that I've approached this year has been different because my role is different, but um, from a competition standpoint, what I'm doing and how I'm working is is all the same. Jason, uh, Sean Payton said he joked with you guys that we're going to write an article every time you check down to the running back. <laughs> are, are we wrong to put a microscope on that, or is that a big emphasis to, <laughs> to, uh, to, to make those kind of throws? <laughs> that's the first. That's the first time I've heard that uh, from Coach. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't really know what to make of that. Um, I think the emphasis is making the right decision. You know, so it's it's taking the taking the shot downfield when you have it, and then knowing when to check it down uh, to get to the next play. You know, so um, I, I think it comes it, it comes down to making the right decision. So I'm, I'm not sure what he was alluding to there, but um, well, I, I think we probably made a right or wrong made a big deal last year about you didn't connect with Alvin a lot in those early games after he you know so often is targeted seven to eight times a, a game is that not as easy quote unquote or natural a throw as, as people might think you know just throw into a running back in the flat I mean I, I think that there are, there are so many things that that goes into a game plan what you're trying to accomplish so you know um, 
I can go back and look at several plays that I had last year that I wish I would have done something differently, you know. But if guys are open downfield, then we're going to give them chances. And um, obviously, you're trying to get the ball to your playmakers, and Alvin's one of the best at his position. So we're, we're trying to do that. Sometimes we manufacture it where he's, he's the number one read. But, um, you know, I, I think as a quarterback, you can't cripple yourself. If you have something downfield, you're not going to check it down. And, um, just to just to check it down. You know? What did you take away from the balance between running and throwing? I mean, did you almost come away from those starts last year thinking you you could have run more? Me personally? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I think as as a as a running quarterback or someone who can run, I think you kind of get pigeonholed sometimes that like if if you do run it, that that is you know it's like a mistake almost or you shouldn't do it. Um, but, but I can tell you that my mindset is no different than most quarterbacks, that if, if there's a guy downfield and you're having the ball to get, or have an opportunity to get the ball out of your hand, then, then you're going to do that. Um, you know, I think the thing for me is there, there are certain coverages that are uh, really enticing for, for a dual, dual threat QB to, to take off and run. And, and at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, having good plays, back-to-back -back good plays, first downs, move the chains, and, and uh, to go and score. And um, I, I do think it's it is a difficult balance sometimes as a dual threat quarterback to to find that. But um, I try to stay true to my reads. There's nothing there. The the great thing is is you know I can make something happen. James. Yeah. Yeah. I love working with Jameis. You know, Jameis is he, he works really hard. I think he's really smart and he's got a lot of experience, you know, playing the position and um, so I, I think the culture here has been no different, you know. I'd say Drew was a great mentor, you know, and allowed uh, all of us to pick his brain and um, you know, he, he's obviously not here but between the four of us in our Q B room we're always working together. Um, given feedback if someone makes a good decision. We certainly let them know that we thought it was a good decision, it was a good throw. Um, and if if there are questions, you know, there are plenty of times where, you know, I might make a throw, but I want to see what happened on the backside of that. I'll come back and I'll ask Jameis or Trevor and Ian and, and so forth or the coaches. And um, we've, we've got a really, really good room and, and a group that really works well together. Thanks, guys. Thank you.